Because you loved the first video, I'm going to share with you four more super easy ways to transform your After Effects projects. And the last one is something so simple, but also one of the most effective. We need to talk about how you sell the effect of motion and energy within your work, as though whatever you're animating actually has life to it. And there's two ways you can do this. First of all, the effect I'm referring to is called a smear. Smears have been used for a long time and they give the illusion of motion. It's kind of like sticking a motion blur on, but gives a way nicer effect. Now to add smears, we can use something called the echo effect. The echo effect duplicates the motion of a layer throughout a movement. And that's exactly what we need. The look of the object or character as though they're being stretched out across a frame. Now typically you'll only want a smear to last one or two frames. So to do this, we can add the echo effect to our layer and we want to keyframe the number of copies. Now I want to set this and then one frame after, I'm going to change my number of copies so it happens on the peak of the move. I'm then going to go forward two frames, set another keyframe and then forward one more frame and turn this off completely. We then want to change our echo operator to maximum and I'll leave it to personal taste for the echo time. It's really that easy. Now, if you want an even easier way and a bigger time saver, you can download a free plugin called Shmear from Battleaxe. I'll leave a link to this in the description below, but it basically takes all the hard work out for you and dynamically creates smears and you have to keyframe nothing. Now, while it's not necessary, adding some depth to your project can really take it up a notch. Take this animation, for example. If you take off the illusion of depth, it turns into something that is visually way less interesting. Now, the easiest and fastest processing way to do it is to keep your layers as 2D and then apply some fast box blurs to your foreground and background elements. And obviously you can change the blur amount to indicate the strength of a depth of field. Now, if you want to make this blur easily changeable, you could link it from one master null within your composition. So I'm going to add the blur to my null and then I'm going to go to edit and copy with relative property links. You can then paste this to the layers that you want to have the same blur values. Now I can easily change the amount of blur on these foreground layers through one controller. Now the other way is using 3D layers. You can activate 3D layers by pressing this button here, and this will now open up a third parameter on your position, rotation, and scale. And this is known as the Z axis. The Z axis is a backwards and forwards within your scene. Now if I move a layer backwards or forwards in the Z and then rescale it to match the previous size, we can now go and create a new camera. Now I like to link my camera controls to a null as this makes it easier to control. So I'll make a null and then make it a 3D layer and parent my camera to it. I'll then switch on 3D for the rest of my layers as well. Now if I keyframe the position on my controller null and then move over a few frames and keyframe the X slightly over. This will give us the illusion of depth and it creates something called parallax. This is where the images appear to be moving at different rates and it's just the illusion of depth that it's creating. Now I definitely consider this a use case effect and it might not be right for every project you work on, but if you want to speed this one up, you can use a free script called Depth. This will offset your layers in Z space by a specified amount, and it will also auto scale and position them back to the original location. Again, taking all the hard work out of it. Adding an element of 3D to your scene can really make a huge difference to the overall look and feel of your project. If you have access or knowledge of a 3D package, you could really think about how you could integrate this with your 2D work and give yourself a little advantage. However, in After Effects, you can fake the look of 3D with shape layers. Now with shape layers, you will need to manually keyframe the paths to create the illusion of depth. Unfortunately, there's not always a shortcut of things and good animation does take time. Alternatively, you could look at using the Cinema 4D renderer with 3D layers to create some simple shapes. Or if you want to go the extra mile, you can import full 3D models into After Effects now too. However, personally, if I was going this route, I'd start dipping my toe into the world of 3D and learning a 3D package. It will not only improve your skill set and give you the potential to work on some really awesome looking things, but it's probably better than working with 3D in After Effects as well. Now at the start, I mentioned there was something so simple you could do, but it would drastically change the look of your project. Now this is as simple as keeping constant motion within your scene. By this, I don't mean having everything on screen animating and going absolutely crazy 
so that your eye doesn't know where to look. Because your project still needs time to breathe, but we don't want it to be boring and kind of end up looking like a PowerPoint. It could be something as simple as not letting your move come to a full stop, or adding some secondary or non-distracting motion to the scene, or even just keeping your camera moving slightly. Now a super easy way to do this is to animate your move as you normally would. Then I like to go to the end of my move and move a few frames back and then add a keyframe. I'll then take my end keyframe and move this over. And if we dive into the graph editor, we can smooth out the curve. And there we go. We just took this simple move to something a little more professional looking. Now obviously I'll leave this up to you, but through secondary motion and just keeping a little bit of movement on screen, it really can make that difference to your project. Now if four techniques wasn't enough for you, you can go ahead and learn some more awesome techniques by watching this video next.